Hi, beautiful ladies of the group. Irina here. How are you doing? I've been so busy <laughs> living my life and been really been feeling affected by the war in Ukraine. Uh, and I actually couldn't, b barely could work for the last, I don't know, three weeks, just feeling all the feelings and going through the big process of really, you know, just being, um, processing a lot of things related to the war but today's life I didn't want to talk about that because personally I it's still of course happening and I'm still affected on some level but I'm also really kind of moving forward with my life as far as like I'm keeping really being conscious and keeping my attention to my life and with that I want to go back to doing lives about relationships and maybe about um, actually not necessarily about just relationships but um, any any topics that are related to um, that could be relevant to this group so I just um, recommitted to doing lives every Monday uh, in this group and uh, just going and talking about different topics uh, for those of you who don't know me and you haven't met, my name is Irina Aronoff. I am a therapist and a mentor. I work a lot with uh, relationships. Hi, Alga. I, I don't think I met you, so good to see you. Uh, and so I work a lot with relationships and intimacy and love. And um, I'm actually working right now on a program that's going to launch in June about relationships and um taking your power back in relationships so I'm kind of having a lot of ideas come and I want to use this lives to share those ideas with you to really share what I know and offer you some guidance some insights some suggestions for ref reflections so, so you can probably take it away and really benefit your relationship so that's my goal and I like I said I'm recommitting doing this lives every Monday uh, probably around this time 4 or 30 p.m. to with different topics and you can definitely suggest and um, ask me questions and give me ideas to talk about and I'm, I'm happy to do what the group needs again I apologize for being so quiet and being away going through this process and today I'm really on this beautiful equinox spring day I am recommitting to this group and offering value uh, to you and keep our connection going getting to know people in this group really fostering this relationship so today's topic um what 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 am I going to talk to about about today today's topic is what is blocking love the flow of love in relationships I work with individuals and couples on their intimacy and relationship struggles. And what I see a lot is that people come, especially those who like in long-term relationships, they come and just say, you know, Irina, I just don't feel that there's so much love between us. I just feel like we are, you know, we are, we are parents. A lot of times we are parents. We are, um, roommates we have a household together but i just don't feel you know i just don't feel the love and the passion we used to have like say in the beginning of a relationship and they present it to me sometimes like it's normal you know <laughs> like but you know irina it's um it's how it's supposed to be because that's just how it is I feel like it's a, such a myth in our culture is that if you've been married or in a relationship for X amount of years, your love and you, your connection, your passion just naturally dies down. I don't know if you've heard that, but that certainly seems to be a myth because women come to me or couples come to me and they say, yeah, we, you know, we're not feeling like there's no like the, this intimate connection and passion and... Uh, intimacy but we don't fight and our relationship is sort of okay um, you know we get along fine but there's just no the spark and it's normal and I always tell them no it's not normal it's not normal to not have the spark and love and connection that you want it's possible to have it at every stage of the game and I know that because I've been married for we've been together with my husband for 10 years 
And I absolutely 100% know that it's possible to have that, to have that mind-blowing intimacy and connection and passion at being, being together 10 years. So when people tell me that it's normal not to have that uh, after X amount of years and that passion and love and intimacy dies with long-term relationship, I say it's bullshit because that's simply not true. So if you bought into that myth, I would invite you to really reconsider that and really, um, really open your mind to that actually it is possible. It's possible to have the relationship that you want no matter how long you ha have been married. But there's certain work that's required for you to get there. If you really want to have a mind-blowing depth of connection and intimacy and passion in your relationship, it's not gonna come easy, okay? It's There's gonna be some work required. So, and uh, but you can do it. Anybody can do it. It's not rocket science. It's just, it needs to be some effort. So today I wanna give you some ideas about what can be blocking uh, love, and depth and intimacy and uh, passionate, mind-blowing, um, mind-blowing passion that you really crave, but just don't seem to have in your relationship. Okay, so I wrote four things, and um, maybe there are more, and maybe some things will come to me later, but I'm just gonna talk about those four things. Uh, first thing are emotional blocks. So, a lot of times people come to me. Um, either individuals who want to work in the relationship or couples and they just can't get to that emotional connection and the reason for that would be that one person or, or both of them are blocked in their emotions so when we are blocked in our emotions we can't feel and then um, we really like that emotional um, energy that emotional feeling uh, energy that helps us to connect emotionally and feel together and then relationship becomes kind of empty and becomes very intellectualized and it's like you know who's gonna pick up kids from school kind of conversations right like and we become like sort of to-do lists like partners communicate about things to do or uh, ideas rational so they only communicate on rational or behavioral level like rational thinking or behavioral what do we need to do to function as a family and a lot of times they are blocked in emotions most of the time i don't want to get too stereotypical here so don't you know don't judge me for throwing some stereotypes there here but most of the times women are more connected to their emotions and men are blocked in their emotions and so sometimes uh, what I see in couples is the woman really comes in and she she has all these emotions and she feels like she's not she's not met emotionally with her partner. And the the husband is like, I don't know what you want from me. Like I put I I work and I make money and I do things I'm supposed to do, but I don't know what you want from me. And the woman is like Oh, you know, I'm just not feeling mad. I'm so not mad. And and she's having a legitimate experience of not being met because a man, a lot of times, men in our culture tend to be more disconnected from their emotions, right? Because boys have been stereotypically, boys don't cry kind of mentality and boys have been stereotypically um, blocked in their emotions. Like we discourage men from feeling. So that's block number one it's like emotional blockages for one or two partners and then um usually the woman who's mostly emotionally connected sometimes it's the other way around men is mostly emotionally connected they're not meeting uh, a partner wants like emotional connection but the other partner has emotional blocks and just can't get there and it stops the a flow of that um connection emotional connection it's like really juicy emotional energy just can't can't flow between partners because one or two, both of them are blocked in that so that's reason number one that I see a lot and the solution to that block would be to start unblocking your emotions 
uh, and really working with your partner, helping him connecting, uh, helping him reconnect to his emotions and really, um, but really even not shutting down emotionally and still allowing your emotional emotional flow to be present. And of course it helps when partners open to work on that because like I said, it is work, but the result is worth it for sure. But you know, it just takes some effort. So that's one reason number one. The second reason I see that stops that flow of emotional connection or of emotional um of emotion um intimacy and passion is criticism criticism number one buzz killer in relationships uh criticism kills the vibe <laughs> it's really number one like when people get critical of each other they just get into this critical defensive cycle and it just, it's really, it's really is a block um, to go deeper into feelings and intimacy and vulnerability to have that intimate connection. So if either you are critical of your partner or your partner is critical of you, that's definitely something to be addressed and worked on because that's going to really prevent um, the, the flow of love in a relationship. And um, the solution there, I mean, that's that's a process. I I, um, I teach this process about like you know how to become less critical. Uh, it's definitely takes some awareness and some steps to get there. And awareness is always the first step. So noticing when you're becoming critical of someone, um, of, of your partner. We're talking about intimate relationships in this case. So noticing when you're becoming critical of your partner and, and like and um, becoming aware of that and really like sometimes noticing but not um, you know not necessarily expressing it um, but there's a reason why you're critical so needs to it need, there's some further steps to go into this process for now it's good to notice it's awareness is always the first step good to notice okay I'm being really critical right now okay like I'm, I'm, I'm really judgmental. Or if your partner is really critical of you, you can express how it makes you feel. Like, you know, when you are so critical of me, then it hurts, hurts my feelings. So that's kind of some suggestions for the criticism, which is number two. Like I said, it's number two of um, big blocks to that flow of intimacy and passion and love in an intimate relationship. So number three, I would say it's uh, breaks in trust and previous hurt. Um, so I seen this a lot where a couple had would be married, I don't know, 10 years. And then somewhere down the road of our work together, that would be like the stuff would come up, stuff that they both thought that they over with let's say for example a year into a relationship a person really lies to the partner and they forgive and forget and sort of go on but emotionally there still has been a pain that hasn't been processed and even though the partner who has been hurt might be like no i'm good i'm over it i'm ready to move on emotionally energetically they're still holding on to that pain and what it does in a relationship, it creates some protection. If I have been hurt one time, I want to make sure to protect my heart to, um, you know, so it doesn't happen again, which is understandable. But unfortunately, it stops again the flow of energy of love, passion and intimacy in relationship. Those things really need to be cleared, really need to be worked on. So there is also a process for that. And couple steps but I guess for now for this life I really just want to name that that's um, often a problem even though people might think like oh we over this so again awareness is the first step so if you resonate with that or if you listen to that and something comes to mind 
then it's a, it's a good time to look at it, to really become conscious of it and aware of it. Um, and those things don't go away on, on its own. They need some work. So it's, it's not like it's those things actually create big, big breaks into relationship, especially if there has been like breaks in trust, like lying. Um, so I would really pay attention to those. Um, another thing that, um, creates the blocks would be kind of, we can talk about it, but maybe a little different, any kind of walls of protection around our heart. So any types of unprocessed emotional, um, experiences from the past, like say from previous partners, even from childhood, like any, any type of processing that really uh, blocks our heart, our capacity to feel any kind of protection we put there will create a block in a relationship to have that flow and connection, natural flow and connection. So that could be um, that could be even like you falling in love uh, at 16 and that person didn't reciprocate your love and you were really hurt and now you associated like um, love and hurt, you know if I if I gonna be open with my feelings I'm gonna get hurt so I better protect my own feelings um, so in any kind of uh, protection or walls around that will create some blocks uh, in in the relationship emotional blocks so and again the solution that with, with that would be to go back to those experiences, the charge experiences that are now are blocking your the flow and work through them. So feel the pain, release the feelings, um, release the emotional charge and um, open the heart to so it can connect. And the final block that I have is expecting that the other person will fill your cup that's that's um also a big one i see with probably women because that's just what i see in my practice when people come and say you know what it just i really want to be taken out and i want to be uh, really um swept by my, you know what is that phrase we use <laughs> sweeping somebody away a <laughs> sweep from your feet, is that the phrase? Mm -hmm. Yeah, like I want to be wooed and I want to be like given compliments and and I want to I want to have that intense, um, you know, I don't know if it's like worshiping, but I really want somebody to really admire me. And yeah, and I had that a lot actually as my blog because I always expected my partner to do that for me. Uh, kind of felt like well. You know, it's it's something that partner should do. It's the partner who should really uh, give me that feeling, right? Feeling of being so loved and appreciated. Like I was waiting for my partner to give me that, and that's a block because I was I was kind of expecting that, and then I wouldn't receive it, and I would get like upset or uh, resentful, and and that would create a block in connection. And what I realized is that a lot of those feeling that I crave for the partner, I already have inside of me. And what I need to do is do, to do my own work to unblock those feelings and let myself feel them and stop expecting my partner to fulfill that need, but start looking into what is it in me that can generate the same feeling. So, that was a huge breakthrough when I set my partner free from providing me that feeling. And again, if it resonates, that's something you can look into. Like, are you expecting your partner to fulfill that need for you, need for love, need to be loved? Uh, and if you're waiting for that, then yeah, that's, you know, not going to happen. So I would, <laughs> that's not going to happen. I would, I really take a moment right now and um, consider doing your own personal work to release your partner from that expectation and actually give it to yourself. Okay, try to do this video short. 
again we talked about blocks to love and how to move from empty dissatisfied kind of boring relationship to more love more connection more passion into your could be a short relationship or long-term relationship doesn't matter any relationship even if you've been married for 20 years 50 years who cares you can create this beautiful intimate loving um uh passionate relationship absolutely and we talked about a lot of five, five blocks to to that which is emotional blocks criticism uh, breaks in trust future uh, past hurt walls slash protection and expectations of the other person so let me know how it was for you drop me a heart a thumbs up something some some kind of reaction i would appreciate ask me questions again i recommitted to doing this lives every monday now so looking forward to connecting more and um let me know how it was for you yeah i'm really just uh curious to hear if any of this resonated if you resonated with number one like put number one um in the in the comments like if you resonated with block number five put block number five so i kind of know what uh what lands with you Okay, have a beautiful, beautiful night and I'll see you soon. I'll see you next Monday. Bye.